So as I was saying, guys, it was more like an interrogation. Town International Airport, and uh, I've just passed through uh, the check-in counters, and now I'm on my way to passport control. Eleven hours waiting for me, but I'm gonna sleep on that plane. It's gonna be so great. I'm at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. So I'm just over here for a stopover and for my next flight to Dublin. Good times guys, good times. Hey guys, we've arrived in Dublin. That's insane, man. Wow. Well, first of all guys, I gotta say that the passport control was not easy. They asked me all sorts of questions and kind of interrogated me, <laughs> you know, but I guess that it is what it is. So as I was saying, guys, it was more like an interrogation. I had to uh, tell them exactly what I'm coming to do in Dublin. I had to show them proof of my previous travels. The one thing that I didn't do uh, coming to this country was to get foreign exchange because I hardly have cash with me or hardly use cash. So I use the, um, the ATMs and I draw cash and my, my cards are all um, open for global use. So uh, I had to give them proof of money that I have in my account, and all sorts of stuff, but hey man, it's all good. What are you gonna do? That's what it is. So right now, I'm on my way to Terminal 1 because uh, uh, I got off at Terminal 2 but now I'm going to Terminal 1. I'm just going to purchase a ticket to the Dublin Express bus service so that I can take the bus all the way to my accommodation. Alrighty guys, so I have my ticket, 8 euros and uh, this is the Dublin Express. Guys, so I've just stopped uh, at the first stop, and that is about five minutes away from my accommodation. So, if you take the express, uh, the Dublin Express, it's one stop. But if you take any of the other bus services, there's about 25 stops altogether. And I found that on Google that the uh, Dublin Express the bus 782 takes you all the way to, well, close to my accommodation. Did I mention that it's cold, guys? It is extremely cold. Ah, there's a train going as well. Oh, and by the way, there's no underground train service from the airport to my accommodation, to my hostel. So I had to take the bus and I'll get you the prices for the Uber service and also for the other taxi service. Get you those prices, it's quite expensive. So uh, the best way to do it is to, to use the bus service, the Dublin Express, which I used. Alrighty guys, that's where I'm staying at. It's the Jacobs Inn Hostel. I am in Dublin. Right, so I just got here last night and uh, it was a bit too late to do it a little tour because I got here just after midnight and uh, just had to find my accommodation and get settled in. So right now, first thing I want to do is get some breakfast. And I'm going to try and make my way down to Temple Bar. So the hostel that I'm staying at does have breakfast, but it's not included in the price. So I just want to see if I can find a different place to have some breakfast. And if not, I will gladly uh, do it at the hostel. 
but I just want to check out the place as well and see if they've got a different variety. There's a couple of tours on offer in Dublin and one of them is a free tour. The others you have to pay for and I'll tell you about that a bit later once I have more detail on that. But the one that I want to do this morning is the free tour of Dublin. So I don't exactly know what it entails and where they take you. Wow, look at this. I'm not sure exactly where the tour takes you, but I will find out. That's the weather right now, guys. It is cold, I'm not gonna lie, and I'm not dressed appropriately. I just have my hoodie on, and I left my jacket at the hostel. So I gotta go back and get it. But I just wanna eat first. It's around 8.30 and my breakfast at the hostel was served from 7.30 until 11 and the free tour also starts from 11 or in fact I've got to meet the, uh, the group at 11 at the old storehouse in Temple Bar. So I'll tell you a bit more about Temple Bar once I have more information on it but it is the place where all these pubs and bars and I think nightclubs as well that's uh, they're all in that area Going for the scrambled eggs. Uh, it seems like it's vegetarian as well. It's the free range scrambled eggs on Tennis O'Brien sourdough bread. They have some other stuff there as well, but I think, I think that's what I'm going for. Alright, guys, now I changed my mind. I think I'll find a different spot for breakfast that didn't look too exciting. And it's quite similar to what I could find at the hostel as well. So let's go for something else. Check my directions as well. Next road left. Actually, I'm just taking the shortcut and I'm going through one of these alleys. China Blue. Alright guys, so obviously this place is a hub of entertainment in the evening. There's nothing much happening here now because it's like uh, just before 9 in the morning. And I think most people are on their way to work or maybe at work already. So I've got to find my way to... Ah, here we are. I passed it. It's right here. So this is where I need to meet at 11. Alright, it's the old storehouse. 
All right, and then I'm gonna meet at 11 and I'm gonna find a group that goes on the free walking tour of Dublin. So this is what I wanna do this morning, guys, is just to get a feel of the place and see where they take us. And then maybe from there, I'll find my way by myself. So hopefully with a free walking tour, I'll be able to see some landmarks and then I might be able to go to those places afterwards just to do some more exploration and maybe walk around the city some more. It's the Hard Rock Cafe. Welcome to Dublin. Alright guys, I'm going to make my way back to the hostel and I think I'm just going to go for the breakfast option at the hostel. And uh, the main reason for that of course is that I need to go back to get my jacket. It's really freezing guys, it's really cold. I know 10 degrees might not be that cold but there's this chilly feeling in the air man. And uh, I'm used to it, I just came from uh, South Africa so it's quite cold in now as well and Jamie, we're just entering into winter as well. So 10 degrees is okay, I can manage it. But it just feels like there's like an icy chill in the air. So I'm gonna go and get my jacket and I think also after I've had some breakfast I'll be a bit warmer. I think that's how it works, right? <laughs> But it's okay guys, I prepared myself for this. That's why I came to, I chose to come to a colder country. I think I need to cross. Right. One thing I want to mention guys, and that is a huge advantage to me as well, is that like in South Africa, they drive on the left hand side of the road so uh, I don't have to fear for my life <laughs> like I do in most of the other countries because uh, I normally look the other way and uh, in fact you know what it's actually quite strange when I'm driving it's so easy to to find my way driving on the right hand side in other countries but walking I always seem to get confused I don't know why that is. Alright guys, I need to run because I'm on the track. Wow. I just made it. I still can't get over the fact that this lady was interrogating me so much last night. And I was saying that when I got to passport control at the airport, Obviously, just before you exit the airport, the uh, customs lady was asking me all sorts of questions. And I'm like, I know they normally do that, but this was the really strange. The kind of questions that she asked me and was like, she was really challenging me. So I know that when entering a different country, they normally would ask you, you know, what brings you to the country, why are you here, and uh, what's your plans, how long you're staying, and you know, all sorts of stuff. But for some reason, I, and you know with some countries you can actually fill in their details online so that when you get to customs control or passport control, all those details are already on the system. So they'll know where you're staying, um, they know your contact details while staying over here, and you know, that, that kind of stuff. But um, for, for Ireland, I didn't have to do that. I only had to complete my passport details.
at the old Sora house and I see the guy with the green umbrella. I think that is the tour guide that's going to take us on the free walking tour of Dublin. Here we go. Awesome. So I've just registered uh, and now I'm just going to get some cash so they don't uh, charge you for the tour guys. You don't have to pay for it but they do accept tips. As you can see, I have my jacket. So I'm wearing a hoodie and a jacket. And you know what guys, I don't feel bad. Because uh, I thought maybe I was exaggerating, but when I see the uh, Dubliners, they are dressed exactly the same. So uh, it is really cold. This lady at, at uh, Customs Control or Immigration, I think she, uh, you know what, I don't think that you can deny somebody access to the country based on the questions that she was asking me. I don't think that they were fair and I don't think that they were relevant either. So she's been asking me what I'm coming to do in Dublin. And I said, look, I'm coming, I'm on vacation and I'm coming uh, sightseeing. And then she wanted to know, what are you sightseeing? And I said, well, look, the places I know uh, off the top of my head is uh, Temple Bar and I wanted to see the cliffs of Maui and I wanted to see, um, you know, some of the castles and cathedrals and stuff. And she said, well, that's not enough. Give me more. And I said, well, I don't know anymore because I'm, I'm here to explore. And then she said, well, how can you come to a country and you don't know anything about the country? And then I said, well, is that not the whole point of exploring? <laughs> I don't think sarcasm worked on her, guys. I think she took offense to that. And then she wanted to know, like, why did I choose Ireland? Why Dublin specifically? And then I said, well, and I think this is what triggered her. I said to her that the last time I'd been to the UK was in 1997. But she didn't even let me finish my sentence when she interrupted me and said, well, we're not part of the UK. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm aware of that. And I didn't say that you are. If you would just allow me to finish my sentence, then... <laughs> And I could explain to you what I'm trying to say. And then she said, well, you, sh you clearly don't know enough about the country because you uh, believe that, the U that that island is part of the UK. And I said, lady, that's not what I said. I never suggested or implied that Ireland is part of the UK. <laughs> I mean, I know that they're not part of the UK. <laughs> and then and I asked her, what do you think I'm, I'm coming to do here? And then she said, well, you tell me. And I said, but I just did. I told you that I'm coming to explore and I'm, and I'm coming sightseeing. <laughs> I, I, you know what guys, I don't think being this lady so eye to eye. I think she was just out to get me. But I explained to this lady that that I travel and that I make YouTube videos and then she wanted to know from me what do I do with the videos and I'm like YouTube That didn't go down well either I think guys I need to work on my responses I don't think that uh, that my humor well, I don't think she understood my humor, first of all, and I don't think that uh, sarcasm works with her, or worked with her. So I really need to work on my responses, and that's, uh, <laughs> that's on me. <laughs> so anyway, and then uh, I said to her, you're welcome to look at my videos. And I showed her some of my YouTube videos, and I said, look, I've been to Egypt uh, in November last year, and I've also been to, to the Philippines in February this year. So you're welcome to look at my videos and then she did. She took my phone and I uh, took it to my channel and uh, I even tried to get her to, to subscribe. That didn't go down too well either. Then this lady said to me, 
that my whole thing is, is uh, my whole visit is making us suspicious. And I asked her, suspicious of what? What do you think I'm doing? What do you think I'm coming to do here? And then she said, well, you tell me. And then I said, well, but I've, I just did. I've been trying to tell you that all the time. I'm, I'm on vacation, I'm sightseeing, and I'm filming. That's what I'm doing. And then she went into my job situation. What do I do for a living? And uh, how much money did I have with me? You know, that kind of stuff, which is, which is normal. But then she wanted to see my bank account. And I had to take my app and I had to show her. I had to show my bank account. Now, I mean, I get it, guys. I get it that uh, you need to be able to prove that you can uh, sustain yourself during your stay in, in any country that you visit. But I just think that this lady took it a little bit too far. And uh, I really think that she, is, she was being unnecessary, especially telling me that she's not suspicious just because she thought that I said that Ireland is part of the UK. And I'm like, this is totally ridiculous. I mean, I know that Ireland is celebrating 101 years of independence. So uh, there's not a chance that I would even suggest that they are part of the, of the UK. I know that Northern Ireland is. And that is why you need a visa, in my case at least, coming from South Africa, I need a visa to go to um, even Northern Ireland. And that visa then obviously would give me access to the rest of the UK, like England, Wales and Scotland but I didn't have a visa so there was no chance of me going to Northern Ireland anyway so anyway guys the moral of the story is that I think that this lady was really um, she was unfair with the question that she was asking and I was the last man standing there everybody else had already left and I think I was the only guy that or the only person that was still left at the immigration desk and uh, with this lady interrogating me but be that as it may I got through I showed her my YouTube videos I showed her my bank account I showed her where I'll be staying I showed her my um, onward travel uh, ticket or in fact my return ticket back to South Africa and I said to her also to look through my Passport, and you'll see that I've been traveling and that I returned to my country all the time so there's nothing to be worried about and eventually she let me through but I just think that <laughs> I was hoping that she would have a sense of humor but she didn't and uh, I just think that she was uh, plain rude and did not give me a nice experience uh, at all at the immigration office. But I'm not going to let I'm not going to let that spoil my my visit to to Dublin. So I'm going to have a great time. Um, loving this little city already. Yeah. And I got to say, guys, I've had some experiences with uh, immigration offices before but never to this extent. I had uh, immigration officers in the US asking me certain questions, but it's usually just, hey man, what are you coming to do in the US? And what's the purpose of your visit? And <laughs> then they would ask me if I had any boltong in my bag. Because <laughs> obviously you can't travel with uh, that kind of food. And I've had some experience in um, in Dubai as well, but nobody's ever been rude to me. Uh, they were just asking questions, and I think they were valid questions. What this lady was asking me, they were totally out of line and they were totally uh, not fair. I wasn't happy about that. Guys, here we are, man. We're in Dublin. It's cold, but I'm just walking and I'm trying to keep myself warm uh, as I showed you earlier on it's about 10 degrees Celsius it's still about the same we had a little uh, quick shower early on uh, not too much so now guys I'm just gonna head on back to my hustle my batteries are running low um, so I need to just uh, 
get that charged and then I might get some lunch as well. Later on I'm going to try out some of that fish and chips. <laughs> that looked quite interesting. Guys, I'm going in. Guys, we're going to end it here. Hope you enjoyed it.